Good morning, guys. This is Alex Hurd from Connection Christian Church here in Columbus, Nebraska. Um, we have a lot to unpack today, so we're going to get started pretty quick. Um, if you have been joining us uh, along the way, we've been working through the book of Mark, and uh, we're going to continue today. We're going to read uh, through Mark chapter 14, verse 1 through 26. And so uh, this is week eight episode three we're about a week from being done and so uh we've almost made our way through the gospel and uh if you have been joining us that's great uh if you'd like to start you can go ahead and go to our youtube channel and you can start from the beginning otherwise you can pick up here and uh dive into the teaching with us so uh before we get into some of the word a little bit uh we're gonna pray and then uh, we'll dive into God's Word. So, uh, Father God, I come to you today so thankful for um, another day, another opportunity to uh, spread your Word and to um, create disciples in this online platform. And we're thankful for the tools that you've given us. We're thank you, thankful for the guidance that you've given us through uh, Pastor Mike and through your Word. I mean, we just pray that today we have open eyes, open ears, open hearts to uh, receive your word and to hopefully apply it to our life in some way and to reflect on your word and and to bring change in, in our own hearts and, and hopefully in the hearts to those around us as well. And so uh, we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, like I said, we're going to be in uh, Mark chapter 14. Uh, we're going to be going through 1 through 26, and so um, we'll kind of break it down here and there, um, stop and talk. There's a lot to unpack, and so I'm going to try not to make this a 20-minute video, but um, just stick with me here. So, uh, Mark chapter 14, uh, verse 1. The plot to kill Jesus. What a title. Um, it was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. So, um, as, we've, as we've learned throughout this uh, study, um, people are trying to kill Jesus all the time. And they're being turned away. Like, it's... It's like he's Yao Ming or something. He's blocking shots. He just, they just can't quite get, get what they need to um, make that decision for them. And so um, what they decide is they're going to have to kill him in private um, because too many people look at Jesus and, and know that he's a great man and they fear kind of the backlash. And so um, right now they're kind of trying to, they're trying to scheme behind the scenes on how they can uh, kill Jesus. And so, uh, in verse 3, we'll continue, uh, Jesus anointed at Bethany. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. And so what Jesus is kind of pointing out here, guys, is that anything that you invest in Jesus, it's not wasted. It's not wasteful. And so there's, there's no expense that's too great for Jesus. And you can't give Jesus too much. And... But you can certainly give him too little. And so 
this woman, she gave the best of what she had to Jesus, which is a good model for us to follow. A lot of times what we give uh, to the church and what we give to Jesus is everything that we have left over. And this woman, it doesn't say that she's rich. It doesn't say that she's poor. But um, if she's hanging out in the house of Simon the leper, there's a good chance that she um, is not very wealthy. But she's taking this thing that is worth 300 denarii, and she's pouring it over Jesus' head. And so she's giving everything that she has and everything that she can. And and for us, that's a good model for us to follow. She's she's definitely giving the first fruits that she has, um, if not the last fruits. And so uh, she's just being a really good model for, for how we should be for looking at our relationship with Jesus. Because uh, no matter what there's always going to be someone else that needs help, you know? Um, and sometimes we can look at situations and say, well, why why did we help this one and not that one? You know, we could have divided it up, but there's always going to be someone else that, that needs help. And so, um, you know, as much as we'd like to, we can't always do it all. And so this woman, she made the best decision that she thought that she could and, and, and Jesus agreed because, uh, you know, there's always problems for us to try and solve. Um, but there's not always going to be time to rectify a relationship with Jesus. And so um, we'll continue to read. Um, in verse 10, Judas is Judas to betray Jesus. Um, and then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And so this leads me to asking you a question. So we see that Judas, who's like one of Jesus' boys, he's he's willing to trade his relationship with Jesus for a little bit of cash. And so what I want to ask you guys is, what are you willing to trade for Jesus? You know, what is more important than your relationship with Jesus and and I want you to really ponder that, you know, because I think that I'm guilty of this too, where I'm, you know, and instead of pursuing my relationship with Christ, I'm, I'm, you know, worried about uh, squirreling away some money, or I'm worried about uh, my time and, uh, you know, how I can, how I can do different things rather than uh, further my relationship with Christ. And I think we're all guilty of that at some point. Um, and so just ask yourself, what are you willing to trade for your relationship with Jesus? And what is more important than your relationship with Jesus? And so um, we'll continue reading in verse 12, the Passover with the disciples. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And it, when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful, and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have better, it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And so, we already know what's coming. You know, we we understand that Judas is going to be the one that betrays him, but and Jesus knows this too. You know, uh, he, there's there's not much that you can get past Jesus, and so. Um, it's kind of funny, actually. We already know through the reading that Judas is going to be the one that um, betrays Jesus. 
And when you read through Matthew, even Judas asks, asks Jesus, he says, is it I? So he's putting on this facade and he's, he's, he's just um, fronting a little bit. And he said, just like all the other disciples, he says, is it I that's going to betray you? Um, and Jesus knows, but Jesus refuses to name names. And so um, he doesn't call him out. And even in our lives right now, this is, a, this is what we see from Jesus all the time. You know, he doesn't call us out, but if we're living in sin, you know, and the Lord knows it too. And so one thing that you need to be aware of is that you cannot hide from the Lord. Um, but through all that, you know your heart, God knows your heart, but you have all these opportunities throughout your life to repent. And so, um, you know, we, we're given this grace uh, by Jesus through his selfless act and you know he knows that we're going to sin he knows that um, we're not perfect and he knew that Judas was going to sin and you know he 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 offers us that opportunity to repent and to to make good on some of the things that we've done and um, I would encourage you to take that opportunity that he's giving you and and make the best of that. So, um, but one thing to keep in mind, and I think it's one of the things that's most important throughout scripture is that you have to understand that you, even though you're not perfect and even though you sin, um, you can't hide it. And so I, I think that all of us are guilty of this at some point where, um, we'll sin behind closed doors or we'll sin where, we're the only ones that see it and we think that we've kind of gotten away with something but I can tell you right now that that's not the case and so um, I know that's that's been something that it's like when you're on a diet and you're telling everybody hey I'm eating clean right now I am only eating so many calories a day but then uh, when you're not with them and you're at home and you're stuffing your face with cookies, which I also have been guilty of doing, um, you know, that doesn't hide either, you know, it still shows up on your, on your body. And so, um, the things that you do that you think that you're hiding from Christ, they don't, they may not show up on your body, but they show up in your heart. And, and that shows up in a lot more ways than, you know, a few cookies ever could. So, um, we'll continue reading, finish up here. Uh, in verse uh, 22 institution of the Lord's Supper and so um, this is where we get communion from and so uh, and as they were eating he took bread and after blessing it broke it and gave it to them and said take this is my body and he took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he said to them this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and so we're seeing the Lord's Supper where, um, you know, Jesus is foreshadowing some of the things that um, are coming. You know, he's telling the disciples hey, this bread right here, this leavened bread, this, or unleavened bread, this is my body that's going to be broken for you on the cross. This uh, juice, this is, this is what's, uh, this is the blood that's going to be poured out for you on the cross. And I think a lot of times we get into a routine of just taking communion because that's what we do on Sundays and um, there's a time for communion, and, and we just do it because we're trying to be obedient. Um, but my challenge to you is to really take that opportunity to uh, remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. You know, he, Jesus, he went to the cross and took all the pain that we deserve, um, so we wouldn't have to endure that, you know. Um, Jesus 
Jesus really put himself on the line for us. And so I think it's only fair that we find ways in our life to do the same. Uh, you know, we don't, we're, we're blessed that he did it for us and that we don't have to go to the cross and we don't have to, uh, endure that kind of pain because he took that for us. Um, and so to honor him, we need to remember that sacrifice that he made when we take communion every week. And so, um, my challenge to you is to get out of the routine of just taking communion and, uh, and nonchalantly to be obedient. Um, but to really take that time and to sit down and to reflect and, um, to really remember the sacrifice that was made for us and to really be grateful for that. And so that's where I'm going to end. Uh, verse 26, it just says, um, and as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, oh, whoops, I went to the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. That's the end. And so um, in the comments, I would love to hear your guys' answers to these questions I asked you. Um, about Judas's betrayal. What are you willing to trade for Jesus? What is more important than your relationship with Jesus? And then um, I challenge you to really take some time and 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 really uh, dive into communion and 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 take some time to remember that sacrifice that was made for us. Um, and and really meditate on that, you know. And if in doing that, it it changes your mindset or if it has an effect on you i'd love to hear that too i'd love to talk through that and so uh anything that you guys would like to share go ahead and uh comment on the facebook or the youtube link um we'd really appreciate it so uh i'm gonna end this with a jimmy special god we love you peace <laughs>